Welcome, great. folks, to Face the Facts. It's great to see you all here once again. We hope your Thanksgiving was better than mine. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Welcome, Tom Smith. Welcome, Phil Healy. It's great to see you guys all once again. Yeah, likewise. I love your yeah. background, Phil. Uh, you have the MVP of the Patriots there. That is uh, Nick Folk. And no, I'm actually going to repeat that. The MVP of the Patriots is Nick Folk right now. That's and I guess he's unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable. I think he's the AFC Special Team Player of the Week. I, I think. think he needs a five-year, twenty mil, twenty-five. <laughs> yeah. I'm only teasing, but I will say he's been much of a shock and surprise. Uh, for the Patriots this year. I can tell you who the LVP was this past weekend. I think we all know who that is. Actually, there's two names, but we'll go to that in just a second. You want to talk about the Patriots, of course, first. They are coming off their thrilling 20-17 uh, to 17 win against the Arizona Cardinals. And it really was a game where I guess the defense held up on their own. The offense absolutely sucked. You won it on the kicking leg of Nick Folk, basically. Well, pretty, can, pretty much. You, Cam, Cam had a good, uh, good game. Oh, don't even drive. go there. Don't even go with good on Cam. Mm -hmm. Don't even go there. Also, the game-ending drive. It got them to the field goal. Oh, for please. Once. Well, I mean, Tom's kind of right. <laughs> Whether it was good or not, it was just kind of it. You know, he made it happen. But Kyler Murray wasn't Keep good. Keep going. Keep yeah, going. Sure. Color me Fair enough. Uh, but Kyler Murray uh, had a didn't have that good of a game. Oh, he did not. No. Arizona was kind of like blah in a lot of ways. But hey, they were blah. They were blah. I, that's a team that everybody thought was going to be pretty good. Could have been a playoff contender and everything. But I didn't see anything that set the world on fire from them. On, Are they still in? on Sunday, Are I they still was in the surprised. Hunt? I have to say, at how many interception-like things were, uh, or interception plays that there were in the game. You know, between Cam, you know, sucking per usual, and then you have. Can you really tell how much I dislike the guy? I mean, never been a fan, never will be a fan. Is a has been. I'm sorry. I don't know. Has. I don't know. Two weeks ago, it was Nick Folk, so who knows? It's true. You never know. But. <laughs> The one play that still stands out in this entire game from Sunday, and it's disgusting, this NFL, was the freaking penalty from the soft league that there is on uh, the block. I forget the guy's name on the Patriots, but that was Number a 100% run back right there for Gunnar, Gunnar uh, Olszewski, and it should have been a touchdown. It was criminal that that was taken away. There was nothing dirty about that hit. That is a football. What did hit. they call it? They called it a blindside. They called it uh, blindside block. Blindside yeah. hit. Oh, yeah. f off league. Well, you know, I'll tell you this much. As soon as Oshesky ran into the end zone, I knew there was going to be a flag. On the play. <laughs> yeah, there was something was strange. Yeah. <laughs> no, no one how the league is going to be. You're going to have a COVID penalty for all I care. Twenty five yards for nothing. It's just hey. how, uh, how the league. No, goes. that's the Detroit Lions. Could be. Could be. Oh, yeah, they got fined for it. We, we all... also have some things to talk about on the Lions in a second because um, I want to ask you guys your opinion on something that happened with the Lions in the past week. But overall with the game, it was nice to see the win. Are we at five and six now? Five and six. Still mathematically in it. You've got the Chargers <laughs> this upcoming weekend. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I like the Chargers a little bit better from a roster standpoint than I like the Patriots, but I've seen weirder things happen. They still have an outside chance of being a wild card or extra team that's there in this playoff hunt. I still think that that could happen. I'm not ruling out that it's not going to happen, but I still don't love this team. There's something about it that they just don't have the right players. They don't have the right depth. It seems like they don't have that January into February Super Bowl bound kind of click to me or, or jive to me. Yeah, no, they I don't agree. have the swagger, man. Yeah. I do want to ask you guys your opinion because I know Tom was super happy about Cam's game winning drive and everything, but I would like to know your stance on the Newton watch here. Are we seeing 
what we're going to see throughout the rest of the season with Cam. And if that is, we need to determine here right now in this lovely program of ours, what is the future going to look like here in New England on the QB front? Are you putting your eggs into the basket there with Mr. Newton again, or are you thinking elsewhere on another potential fit at quarterback? Well, I'm first. thinking. I'm thinking elsewhere. It's starting to look a lot like uh, the Brady that we saw the last uh, last season and the season before. Where I, he just he just didn't care. I agree with the not care thing, but I still would take the unmotivated, ticked off hair up his ass Tom Brady last year that you might have because at least he had the credentials. He had the Super Bowls. He had the, you know, he has all the, all the accolades as a, one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Cam Newton is a born loser. I'm sorry. And I don't mean to be harsh, but the guy has done nothing to show me that he's going to be a AFC champion playoff champion, Super Bowl champion, born loser. Loser. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they probably would just, why not bring Jared Stenham out now and see what I happens to, and I throw mean, him out? As much as he didn't light the world on fire before when you played against, was it Denver? Or who did he uh, Kansas he City, he for? came in. He Kansas came City. in at Kansas City, and he threw a touchdown. Yes, he uh, did. But he, he, also, he also, you know. Interceptions and, yeah, I mean, yeah. uh I'd say probably like maybe you have more bad throws than good, but his touchdown pass wasn't that bad. And honestly, man, why not ride him out if he's one of the people you're going to be investing in, which they probably aren't. It sounds like they're not, especially if they're not putting him in at all. Like, wouldn't you think? Yeah, they, I don't think the know. future stood him here. And we know it's not Hoyer. I would hope it's not Cam. So my question here is, who do we see on another roster – that maybe their contract is going to be expiring. The Patriots look to bring somebody else in, or maybe it's from a draft standpoint. I think they have to hit the reset button here. Chad Henney, go for it. <laughs> the world is your oyster. Chad Henney. Is. Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, what do you? Uh, what, I mean, would they, would they potentially take a chance at maybe a guy like uh, – a Derek Hen, a not um, I'm excuse, a Derek Carr, excuse me. I, as much as he's not really much of anything with the Raiders and all, is he, does he have a better upside than say a Cam Newton or maybe a Matthew Stafford? Would you take a Matthew Stafford if the Lions want to part ways or something with them? Put him in a I mean, yeah, I mean Aaron Rodgers. I mean, would sure. would, would Green Bay part with Rodgers? I mean, maybe Rodgers is just done and doesn't want to be in Green Bay anymore. I might take a chance on an Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to – I think it's the whole team top to bottom. But also, this is a weird year to begin – I mean, A, it's a weird year. You have some people who aren't in it. You don't have Hightower. It was also aging. Your, deep, your, your defense jumped. is basically a bunch of outcasts, basically. I mean, you have no Hightower. You have no Patrick Chung. You yeah. have um, or, a couple no, other players are out. And yeah, was it? Why? No, Wise is in. Who is um, – Dietrich Wise. Oh, no, he is I think he's out. I think he's I been. Think he's out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of. I mean, it looks like the whole team needs a little bit. Like defense, maybe less, but it seems like the whole team needs kind of a rebuild in a lot of ways. But you know what? Yeah. I mean, it's if amazing. We're in saying it. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Mind boggling to me is we're saying it, and they've been about five hundred this this season. And they and could like, be seven and, we and five. Talked about it on our past episode. We're too, seven and they, four. They potentially could be like a seven and four or an eight and something. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it could be a lot different. And I don't know, Stafford. That actually is an interesting pick. I think that might be. I mean, it, but it's nothing. It's weird. Are we talking about rebuilding for the long haul, or are we talking about another bridge? Which you know, it's fine if we're talking about another bridge, it's just, as long as we admit what we're talking about. You know. Wait, well, if we're talking, that... if we're doing a bridge, we need a, we need a guy that can actually throw the ball. You you don't think Rodgers can throw the ball? No, I'm not saying I'm not oh. saying that Rodgers can't throw the ball. No, I'm saying that we need, you know, we need a guy that we can throw the ball. We need an actual like, person like to throw Rogers. the ball. Yeah. Or I don't know about you, but I I get I still get that feeling every time Cam Newton throws a football I cringe. He can't throw does, a football. I don't know often. how he's made it in the NFL. He looks like he's freaking hurling the football on his throws. It looks like he's throwing at 150 miles an hour. 
I have no idea how that motion that he uses is good for his arm. It looks like it's very extraneous. Do you, do you think he's been hurt accurate. for a while? Do you think he's been hurt for a while because he never was meant to be like an uh, overly accurate? He could guy? be. He could be. I think his best skill set is his run, you know, his running. Also, he's always, he's always had like a decent running back with him. And that's one seems. thing for Tom to credit Tom on. Yeah, he did have that game winning drive because of his legs and because of that stupid hit on that idiot from Arizona who had that shot to the head and penalized. I think it was like a 15 yard penalty for a personal foul. And it yeah, they were like one hit. yard short or something, and they, they, they had hit. the first down. And... What an idiot. If I was that coach over there, I'd say, buddy, you're done. Idiot. But that's just how I felt. I'm not crying. I just have something in my eye. Excuse me. Well, hey. I'm not showing any sympathy for Arizona. I'm always crying. We, 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 probably, we probably would have lost that game if it wasn't for the LVP, the kicker from Arizona. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because yeah. he, he put us in some decent field goal or decent field position. Anyway. I think you saw from Sunday a team that's with the Patriots, as much as they've, they've had their ups and downs in their battles, they still have a better coaching staff than 90% of the NFL. It's crazy. And we criticize McDaniels, and we criticize, you know, some of the defensive calls and everything. But we're still a very good football team and a great organization. So – that's the one thing that I have a glimmer of hope on with where this team will be led, you know, will be led into the future. Does anybody know why uh, I saw a thing on it, uh, Cam apologizing to McDaniels after the game about something? Yeah, because he sucked. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that was the reason. But... I think it was. Oh, no, I don't. Gosh, yeah, I, I, I suck. Sorry. Is that no, Tom? Are you talking about the thing where he's doing this? And he's kind of like talking to him at the end. He's like I think so. I, 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 you know, I get the Ness and email alert, so that was one of the headlines a few days ago. <laughs> That's a problem. Some BS about Cam doing something. I don't. know. You read it, reader. You got it. You, uh, did you say you got a Nesson update? I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. No, I get like Nesson uh, emails. Yeah, you may. You might want to unsubscribe from those moving forward. Ow! Fake news. That's a, that's a rip. I, 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 will rip pretty accurate. I will rip Ness in the smithereens after they took my boy away. I will rip him to smithereens. They took your what? What did they take away? They took my boy away. Or so yeah, I, oh, sure. Well, I mean, yeah, the I, Red Sox. I've never, had a, I've never gained my respect back after that. Still won't. I never will. I'll go to the grave with that. I mean, I hope they don't murder you for it, but I mean, I sure. I don't either, but that would be not a well-liked. Nesson is a banned word here at my store, my house, my everything. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think like he was apologizing. Oh, go ahead, Nick. Sorry. No, I, I was just I was going to you. That's what I meant. Like this. Oh, part. oh it's, no, that's pretty fair. I wave my wand at you. It's all good. I I think yeah. I don't know. Cam probably was apologizing for crapping. I don't know. I could have. I, I'm telling you, it's probably the truth right there because that was one of the mo it was one of the worst statistical football games that a quarterback has had in the last 30 years. That's how bad that game was, and he still won. Do you think he's feeling it too? Do you think he he's got to know? I think he knows. Oh, he knows. He's he's yeah. garbage right now. Yeah. But you know, maybe to give him a little bit of sympathy, not from this old heart, but he might have some sort of underlying condition that from COVID from not well, having even, that energy and everything there. So well, I, maybe, I will give yeah. him, I will give a little bit of a little bit right here, that little yeah. bit in my evil, evil heart of mine. Um, but do you think there's something else physically? Yeah. You're, you're, the, you're the Grinch. You're the Grinch. Yo, it'll grow at one point. Sometimes. But Sometimes. then it'll grow too big and then your chest will explode and then we'll have to put you back together right. in some freak accident. But this I mean, that's how, Sunday, that's how it the, the Patriots have the Chargers, so that's a game we like. We uh, like we said earlier. I am going to cross my fingers that they get the win. Again, better coached, better coached team. It's just going to be a battle of what happens on the depth front. You know, the one the one thing that I look for here is if Cam really felt bad about his disgraceful performance. Basically, uh, we'll, we'll see a rebound here. I hope. 
Do you I mean, believe the, in miracles? Yes. The, the, pat, the pattern is they, they play better against the better teams. So, because, you know, you couldn't beat the Texans. Right. Right. All right. I want to transition next. Um, speaking of the Grinch, I do want to talk about one particular player here in the NBA. Um, well, hold on. Schedule. We, we oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Get to talk about the Lions. Oh, that's right. We didn't talk about the Lions. I was, I had somebody else on my mind. Matt Patricia was fired from the Lions on uh, this past. Oh, officially, huh? Sunday. Yeah, oh, wow. And the other thing I want to mention on the Patriots is I don't know if you heard a press conference recently with Belichick. Do you guys know who the defensive coordinator is? No. His you son, know. isn't it? By de facto? He finally yeah. said it was Steve Belichick. Finally. Yeah, because he, yeah, oh, he praised time. him, right? It was being yeah, run by like actually five different his people. Son, believe it or not. Yeah, it was, it was raised by a group of eighteen people. Son, yeah. you're wonderful. You are the defensive coordinator. What, Dad? What I am? I am. Uh, what? Jared Mayo too, right? I it was like him and Jared Mayo last year, and I thought that was. Yeah. So it was, was him, Jared Mayo, year? and then one other guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, well, I'm sure. I'm sure he doesn't call. I want to ask you guys a question though: yeah. Is with Patricia being fired? I personally don't think he ever gets another chance to coach in the NFL because I don't think he's a head coach. I think he's a defensive, you know, Romeo Cornell kind of person. Yeah, he was know, set up. He was set up to fail going to Detroit. Oh, you do think the Patriots bring him back, and do you want him back? Well, I mean, I think he. I mean, you talk about Romeo Cornell. He's a journeyman too. I mean, he's he's filling they, in for the yeah. He, he'll, but he also coached for Kansas City. Like he's coached. Uh, I think he coached for the uh, Cleveland as well, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, as a head coach, like they all. I mean, the NFL is incestuous, so I mean, like, yeah, someone else is going to take him because, like, all the jobs out there, someone he's going to fill in somewhere, either as a coordinator or a head coach, and maybe he will. I don't know. It's weird, Tom. You really? I'm interested to hear your thoughts on him being set up. Yeah. I, well, I mean, obviously, like, I, he wasn't. I, I think like, he set himself. I, I think he set himself yeah. up to fail. No, I no, he was he was set up by someone else to fail. But like when you say, "Oh yeah, I'll head coach, I'll head coach the Lions," absolutely. <laughs> it's like un until they get a you know a decent quarterback, like two wide receivers and a running back, you're not going to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> they barely have a defense. I don't enter. I don't bring him back. I never was a big fan of Patricia. I thought he was very overrated. I think that the Patriots know what they're doing right now. I think Belichick would rather work with his son, Steve, and Mayo and whoever else is going to be there on that staff. And I think they make it work. I think Patricia picks up another job, but I just don't think it's going to be in the Patriots. Well, Steve, Steve's been under the – that chapter is closed. Steve's, Steve's been under, uh, under Belichick for, what, six years now? Six seasons? Yep. Under Belichick and Patricia or something like that? Yep. So – I don't, there's no need to bring Patricia back. No, I don't think I don't think there is either. And if you remember correctly, that same person, Patricia, was the one that lost to the Eagles and got. Um, oh yeah, he got the job right after that. Basically, right? got annihilated in the. Um, that Super Bowl. In the, in the Super Bowl, so. One of the highest scoring Super Bowls ever, yeah. Yep. And yardage wise too, yeah. Okay, hey, now can I transition to the lovely French <laughs> I wanted to talk Go to? Ahead. Did you guys see the Go. NBA schedule proposedly coming out? And did you happen to see who the – look at that face. Yeah, sorry. Um, nice to see. Did you happen what? to see who the Celtics are playing on Christmas Day? Oh, really? Did you? Uh, I, I, wow, did, calm down. It's all right. If they're playing on Christmas Day, that's great. got a good great. smile on my face because this, this, uh, this makes me laugh quite a bit. Why? Why does it make me laugh? Oh, you're right. It is. Oh, is it Brooklyn? <laughs> oh, That'll be crazy, wouldn't it? Yeah. I am. Well, I I don't like to bet. I am not a better. I am not in anything. But how much would you bet that that jackass does not play in Boston on Christmas Day? I mean, will it matter? Because he's there's not going to be no, a crowd. No, no. Honestly, it would make absolutely make my day if that piece of crap actually stays back home and it, it, with his Scrooge self and stays the hell away from Massachusetts. Well, but the well no, Phil, yeah. Phil, if there, were, if there was no crowd, he, he'd actually, there's a better chance of him showing up. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the last time he did it. True. That's the, the only thing that I would it, say on really, Tom's standpoint is that. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like there's because no, there's no crowd or supposedly small amount of people, that coward would actually show up. Yeah, I mean, and I also think like he had a better, like he had a better excuse then because he was kind of whatever you thought about his injury, he could he could claim it to be a factor. Now it's not necessarily like there's no real you know there's no real wiggle room for that. So he would just be doing it either to get rest or whatever. But I don't think I've ever, ever disliked. I hate the word hate. I'm not going to use it. Because <laughs> but you just a did. Wrong word. <laughs> I've never despised or disliked another athlete that has played for the city of Boston in my entire life. Like can you him, think of or... another person? I can't think of another person. Carl Everett? Yeah. I don't know. I can think of a bunch of people. Matt Barnes? Matt Barnes? <laughs> Nick Folk? <laughs> Actually, I, ha I had some things to say. Yeah, I had some things to say about that because the Red Sox resigned that has been to another year of $4.5 million. So What's I just a... said, why don't I just Matt go Barnes? flush the rest of that money right down the toilet? And they also signed Mr. Crooked Neck. My aching neck. Bar, uh, Ryan Brazier is back. Wooey! Get the duck boats ready. Nice. Bunch of has been cast off. I'm a Brazier boy. Yeah. 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 Brazier. <laughs> I don't know. Brazier. 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 A man's uh -huh. ear. So that's what's proposed on Christmas Day. Kyrie, stay the hell away. We don't want you. So is that opening day? I forget. Is that like? Oh, it's not supposed. I guess they're opening up about like a week or so before. Supposedly. Wow, that's coming up. But there's like 68, apparently, 68 to 70 people who have, um, I guess, the virus right now. So I don't know. Wow, that's they, crazy. That right yeah, now. I don't like, it, it's not like how they did okay. in the bubble. So it seems like it's going to be I that much worse. So I don't know. I don't know what they're Yeah, I agree. That, but that's the stance on that end. Um, there's really nothing to report on the hockey front. Don Sweeney's still in his hole hibernating. So that was, nothing was done on that front as I almost crushed my computer screen sorry um there's, there's nothing to report on the bruins front it's kind of sad you know it's really a uh, terrible, well, disgraceful off season for them for the celtics gordon hayward is gone jeff teague is on the team and tristan thompson forgot. yeah yep that's great i totally forgot about that and i blanked on it phil oh so no it's all right it well that um, should tell you volumes about how it affected everybody because it's kind of like oh, it really right, didn't it was like yeah. oh gordon hayward's gone great you did, what did you do guy <laughs> right yeah and today is Wednesday. Uh, I'm not going to miss different. Gordon Hayward. I'm, I, he seems like a good guy, but not worth the money. I'm sorry. Not. No, and it's a shame. Like, the whole thing is a shame. I imagine maybe Tatum would have grown into his own little uh, – in a different way if he didn't go – if Gordon Hayward didn't have that injury. But it's still weird. Like, think about it how it could have been if they had Hayward at, his, at the top of his game and Kyrie and, you know, uh, Brown, um, Horford and all those – guys hanging in there who knows well, what would have happened third i would say in the celtics roster here is it looks like they have a little bit more depth now with you know jeff teague and thompson and some other people that are there so the depth looks a little bit better but my biggest concern here still is kemba walker i think that knee is i'm alarmed by it because even danny ainge came out and said that he's going to not be playing at the very beginning of the season they wish they sat him out more in the playoffs because they don't think he healed the right way I don't think that knee is healthy, and I think that that's going to come back and be a real detriment to this team. Yeah. I'm sorry to say it because I like Kemba. Outside yeah, of him too. posing with the Yankees hat yesterday for, for, a, for a pitcher and for a press conference, I had some things to say about that. But he still seems like he's a, he's a good dude. I really would, in a way, like to see the Celtics give an opportunity back to Isaiah Thomas. I know no team has really done anything with him. He might be full of hot air saying that he's the healthiest he's been, but fans loved him here. I mean, he gave his heart. He gave his soul. He did everything here. I'd take a chance. 100%, man. I, uh, there's no IT. No one dislikes IT here. I mean, no, maybe, I, maybe I the pundits. I have nothing but, to hate about that guy. I think you he played saw his ass the passion. Off. You saw the care. You saw how much he loved this city. Did Danny Ainge end up making the right move from it? Probably because he was damaged goods, basically. You got Kyrie, that jackass, for a couple of years, like a year and a half. But 
I don't think – I mean, I don't think anybody would go back and say that that was the wrong move. No, and it's easier to say – like the Gordon Hayward move, it's easier to say that, you know, it, it didn't work. When things don't work out, it's easier to say that it was wrong. But at the yeah. time, what do you, are you going to do – are you going to make that move? Probably nine out of ten. The one thing I'll give Celtics credit for is that was really their first huge big free agent signing outside of Al Horford. You know, it, yeah, it, Kyrie, it, oh, Kyrie Irving. No, yeah. I was going to say oh. Gordon Hayward. You know, for a oh, match, yeah, yeah. you know, and everything. Now the Charlotte Bobcats give the Celtics back. Is it a thirty-two million e- exemption of some sort? Yeah, it's it's pretty much like they get another trade exemption. It's so convoluted, so weird. But yeah, they so pretty much a couple names yeah. that were shared that can fit this whole money ballpark and everything. And one of them happened to be uh, Giannis. Giannis fits into that that name, but I don't think Milwaukee's doing anything with him. I think he's he's there for good. Um, Nick, uh, Nicholas Batum is that is that his name? I could be completely butchering the name. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, um, that's another name that was like a center that could be a good potential fit. I think I like this roster more now than I did a year ago so Tristan Thompson is one of my favorite players but he might right. he okay. yeah no he's he's one of the he's only someone said like oh he's only six nine it's like yeah but he's one of the best rebounders out there well, and that was a, them to have something because I think that was something yeah. that was missing quite a bit for them that was one and of the I weaknesses think they, they yeah. could have done quite a good job if they had a Thompson like person in their lineup during the playoffs yeah I could uh, bam out of Bayou for Miami kind of tore him apart a bit so but I mean yeah, I think him and – I think Thompson and Tice out there are going to be a good combination. Yeah. I think it's going to yeah. be something special. So, yeah, check it out. Well, I'm glad that you all were able to – I'm glad we were able to talk about the Patriots, a little bit of the Celtics. There really was nothing Bruins-related or baseball-related for everything. Well, we did kind of mention Matt Barnes and the rest of the has-beens that were re-signed. So, there's your wonderful coal under your in your stockings gift, folks. Um, the one thing I want to wrap up with, this is our holiday season, of course. Um, I do want to ask you guys to name one particular Christmas movie or Christmas classic that you really like to enjoy and like to watch over and over and never gets old. And it can't be the same one that that person says. So let's go to Phil Ooh. first. Oh, sorry, Tom. So for example, Tom, if <laughs> Phil said, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, you cannot say that. But yeah, then yeah, again, I got you, it. But then, it. <laughs> he understands. But if it it depends if it's like the claymation one or the animated one. They're That's correct. You could specify. You uh, could which specify. all the Rankin Bass animated like claymation ones are awesome. I love the Rankin they, Bass. They ones. are great. They are classic. Uh, but one of my favorites, and that's something I usually, uh, it's something that I it's been in my family. It's it's been in my family. I say because we watch it all the time, and I have one of the soundtracks on uh, vinyl. Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, and I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's a Jim Henson joint as okay. they say. And it was something uh, that was on HBO back in the late 70s, like early HBO. And it was like, an, it's like an hour long, like it's like a an, uh, TV hour long. So it's like 40 something, 30 to 40 something minutes. I think you can find it on YouTube. Uh, okay. You can definitely get it on Amazon. I don't know if it's on anything streaming besides YouTube, but yeah, I love it. It's one of my favorite things. So that would be your recommendation for those out there. Give that a chance. That's a Emmett different Otter's That's a good Jug one. Band Christmas. Yeah, it's great. Good one. Good one. All right, over to you, Tom. Uh, Home Alone. There you go. Which one? My all-time favorite. Can't can't go the Christmas season without watching it. You have a particular one that you like better? Oh, I like the no. first one. Number three. The first one, the original. Number four. Num- number three. <laughs> number, <laughs> like number, hey, number wait a minute. One. Three is a whole lot better than four. Don't get. Whoa! Yeah, listen, how many are listen, there? There's like five. I don't even. There's like I don't 20. even touch three and four. Three and four are just not even the same. One and two are the best. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. Yeah, I think three is a different kid, and French Stewart is in yeah. three and four, I think. I think he um, is. Uh, the, the number yeah. three is with Alex something lips yeah, or something. that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yep, yep. And it has, uh, I, guess, I think they set somebody off in an igloo as a joke or some sort. Yeah, something it's like that. It's pretty stupid. Although, although Home Alone 2 has one of the best opening scenes ever. When they're in the fist truck, and they just pop their heads out. Oh, that's Oh, that's yeah. Funny. That was a good one. Um, I'll go with everybody's – one of everybody's favorites is Elf. Um, he would say There's that. so many lines in that movie where they become just a 
big part of everybody's life. You know, well, you're Santa an angry elf. You're, you're or an the angry bird elf, from so. Buddy or Hello, Mr. Narwhal. You know that kind of stuff. It's <laughs> <laughs> you're, well, you're an angry oh, elf, so I mean, you would I'm like that. Dad, right? You know that that kind of thing. It's ouch. I'm pretty Man. good at that, Emma, aren't I? Oh, Mr. Yeah. Narwhal. <laughs> But that, those are those are lines that I think have become such a part of life, and everybody has just said, "Oh, it's so funny." They could watch it over and over again, and um, it's one of those that it, it's a classic. And also, well, it's not, weird. Not yet, but it will be. Well, I think I think <laughs> oh, depends I, what age. I think I mean, it is. I think depends. Twenty years old now that movie, which yeah, is well, unbelievable to me. Is it two thousand two? Two thousand three. Yeah, 2003. 2003 it came well, just think about it. Like, it all depends on when you, you know, I'm a different age demographic than you, Tom, and Nick is closer to my age, but I think we're like five years apart, I, or even seven. I forget. I'm 38. I just turned 38. Like, I'm 30. Uh, Nick's I'm only 20. a year older than me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Although we oh. tell the kids that he's 20 years older than I me. Am so. You I can, am. you honestly, like, all right, so I'm the old fart here. Well, fine. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, it's all right. I mean, time is linear. What am I going to do? <laughs> But, now, now, now I'm now I'm 18. So yeah. Oh, you really can pull it off. I can. You, you should just you should just have like that old timey like scally cap and like yeah, chew down 18. on a coin. Like the hair's showing a little bit now. It's 18. <laughs> you just have a giant lollipop. Hey, what's going on? No. Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to um say too on that classic front, I would say like you said the Rankin Bass ones. That's the Year without a Santa Claus. Santa Claus is coming to town. Frosty, Rudolph, my personal favorite in that bunch is Year Without a Santa Claus. And in a way, it kind of is like that for 2020, sadly, because of all this crap we've had with COVID and everything. So not that an animated movie ever comes to life, but in a way, it's kind of like what life has been this year. Well, Santa's just going to wear a mask this year. He won't have a beard. Of course he is. And if you're beard. Well, also, if you're yeah, dyslexic like me. Santa. No, it's good. And you know what? If you're dyslexic like me, you always think it's Satan. So it's not a bad, you know, if someone oh, no, comes that's up, Heat Miser. That's Heat Miser. Oh, that's true. Which, yeah. honestly, the Rankin, it's called Rankin Bass. R-A-N-K-I-N. Yeah. yeah. All that animation stuff is golden. It's like from the 60s. It it's pretty amazing. But uh, you'll have those snowflakes out in this world that want to ban it because it's too offensive to some people. Well, I mean, I don't know if it is like, I mean, even with the most... Uh, the most precious person. I don't know if it is, but well, look at uh, like the Rudolph battles that they have. That they're offended because the reindeer okay. gets picked on. Oh Ooh. well, that's kind of bizarre because I mean that's the whole point is like he gets bullied and they all overcome they it. Go but stick their nose where it doesn't belong. That's what my lord. Doing. And if it lights up, then you got some problems. Oh, we got a but, lot of people whose nose light up on. Well stupid. then, well at least it could it could prove maybe it's more effective than radon or someone. Yeah, or, we need a lot of that on some of these people in this land. But well, anyway, that's about enough today on this lovely land of uh, oh, facts. What? Oh, why not? Well, I'm sorry. One recent movie that just is coming out, I think, on demand. Uh, it's the called Fat Santa. No, I'm no, but it's it's kind of on in that uh, realm. It's called Fat Man, and has Mel Gibson playing Santa, and has Walter Goggins, who's a hired hitman, to take out Santa by a kid who got coal in his stocking. It's it, so, looks, it sounds like such a stupid movie. Oh, it, but it looks beautifully stupid. No, but Walter Goggins is amazing. And everyone, it looks great. You made great. Nick leave the show. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? He's leaving to watch it. You should too. I just, have to, you know, I just have to go put my head in my trash barrel. But <laughs> if, if the movie's playing in trash barrels everywhere, go to it. Hey, that's no, no I, way to talk about the showcase cinema in Woburn. No. Oh, man. Oh, wait. Is that still alive? Is that still alive? That needs to be cut from the show when you edit it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a business now in Wolverine, so I can't say that. All right. AMC in Burlington. We'll, we'll cut that out, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I've had enough today, so... <laughs> Bah humbug to you all and to all a good night. 